we are ready. This is Harry Herschel. Yes, and I was a, um, a senior in the, in the uh, fall semester at Purdue University taking um, um, mechanical engineering courses, fluid mechanics, machine design, heat power, heating and ventilating, and a, a course in government. And the uh, course in heat power was five credit hours, and I got a, a five grade in it. And that grade was, came from working in the, um, in the power plant itself. All of the inputs had measurement devices on it so we could tell the, the uh, quantity going in. And then on the output, the, the outputs were, were in two parts. Electricity, which powered all the, uh, the the buildings on campus, and then the the steam outputs uh, were carried in the tunnels through uh, through pipes, and uh, they heated the buildings in the uh, in the in the winter. Um, almost no buildings had air conditioning in it, as I recall, uh, because. Um, when I was in school, the um, the classes ran uh, three semesters a year, hmm. and w at one time uh, I, I was I stayed in classes five semesters in a row, and that really speeded up my graduation. I'm sure. In the power plant, it was um, a, 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 re a relatively clean place. I mean, there wasn't a lot of dust and and dirt flowing around. And um, the instructors were there showing us all the in instrumentation. And um, the coal came into uh, the, the power plant from coal cars delivering the stuff that, that had a, a, a bottom that opened up and the coal dropped through into a chute and then was carried into the, uh, into the building on conveyor belts. And then it, they were the coal was uh, fed into the um, into the boilers. I don't remember how the how the boilers were kept hot all the time, but they obviously were either either with um, electricity, either electrical elements, or with the uh, with with gas. But I'm, there was no I, I do have no recollection of gas. Being was, a, they. Um, there were steam engines in the bottom. In fact, we saved one for the new building. But they were they not like as big as this table. Steam engines downstairs in but, the basement. But, but how so. did they keep those steam engines hot? So they they burned the coal all the time. Right. That's um, that's what I I don't because that that's obviously part of the input. So you, we have to measure that. And then we I don't remember how we converted the. Um, the um, inputs into into BTUs, but I know that was part of the calculation. He had to he had to figure out uh, the value of the, the of the inputs in in, in uh, heat power uh, terms. About how many people were in your class, like in a class, if you were? There? Oh, there were about twenty or twenty-five. And there were no girls. I don't think there was a girl in our in our class. All all men. And the 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 general theme of engineering was established by Andre A. P a. a. Potter, the dean, and his his mode of operation was to produce engineers that could get out and work on the floor of the factory. We were, it was a really a hands-on kind of thing. You, you learn by doing, and you learn the, the basics of, of engineering with, with um, this, this general approach. Now, later, uh, I graduated in 1947, and I, I was in a family business and came back in 1956 and somewhere along the line, 
the president of the university, Purdue University, decided that engineering had to be more theoretical rather than, than practical. Mm -hmm. And he hired a professor named Paul Chena, Chena, C H E N E A, and he came to campus and set up a, um, a, a building and a, a program called Engineering Science. And he gradually moved all of engineering away from this practical, this practical uh, application of Dean Potter's to the more theoretical, highly mathematical, highly, uh, you know, you, you, we were, they, students then and now are building models out of, out of, uh, up with computers rather than this hands-on kind of thing. Right. So when you were in the power plant, what types of things were you doing? We were reading the gauges. We were watching the operation, watching the the, the boilers uh, producing the steam, and then that steam went to produce turb, uh, uh, turn the turbines that generate electricity. And they were they, they were all right there in front of us. Right. Did you interact with the employees at all? Yes. Um, th there were. It, 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 it's my recollection that it was not a labor-intensive kind of application. There were relatively few uh, employees in this thing. Okay. As, but again, I can't be sure of that. It, it would be nice if we could see some of the um, um, accounting, uh, the accounting records to see what kind of see what kind of uh, labor they did, work, right. what, what force they had. And you remember the train going through campus? Absolutely, absolutely. And I will look to see, you have looked at the debris and you did not see any pictures in that. No, there's just the one. But um, we are interested in maybe personal recollections of yes. like, the disruption of campus life. I mean, was it a disruption or was it just taken for granted? It was just taken for granted. That here come the cranes and we got out of the way. I never saw, I never knew an accident, never, never knew anything, any kind of untoward event at all that would indicate uh, danger or anything like that. Do you think that students who were not engineers, who weren't involved inside the power plant, do you think they realized what was going on there? That it was the power plant that was responsible for essentially enabling the university to function? I'm not sure. The major um, visual uh, evidence of that was when the snow, when, whenever you had snow, the tunnels that carried the steam mm -hmm. were never, were free of snow. You could mm -hmm. walk around and never touch snow by walking on the tunnels that carried the, uh, the, the heat to the, uh, to the buildings. That's crazy. Yeah, it was Way very, to keep your very, feet dry. Yeah, it, it was, it was really, uh, it was really a very obvious thing, uh, but um, I don't ever remember anything that would disrupt that. Hmm. Even at the coldest days, they never called it. It was a, 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 a very unusual winter that you, they, they stopped, they closed, they stopped classes. They, yes, because now they rarely do. Yeah, they they really did then too. Mm -hmm. They all they kept it going. Um. It's my recollection. You see, uh, I have. Do, do you know anything about Dean Potter? Are you interested in that? Yes, certainly. Please. I met his granddaughter, his great granddaughter, in Mexico, mm -hmm. and I'm still in touch with those people. And she told me his story. He, this is not this, this is for not for for, for publication but Purdue was a very anti-Semitic place mm -hmm. there were there were almost no um, professors or there were almost no faculty or administrators that were Jewish the first one was A.A. A. Potter he came from Vilna in Russia 
and he came here expecting to be a rabbi. And he had, he, he had a, a, a talit and a, and a kippah, and he arrived in Boston, and he lived with his uncle. And his uncle said, Andre, religion is for, for Europe. We don't have religion. If you, everybody that, that, all the Jewish men are professionals, lawyers, engineers, doctors. That's what you got to get. You got to get that religion. Forget that. So he, he, he entered MIT. He graduated with distinction. He's a very smart man. At, at his gradu, after his graduation, he went to work for General Electric in Schenectady, in New York. And, and General Electric was attached to Iowa State University. And Iowa State said, we just lost our, our engineering faculty. Do you have anybody that would like to come in, come to be, be, be an academic? So they went to Potter and they said, how would you like to, to move out of industry into, um, in, into academia? And he said, yeah, I, that would be fine. I would, I would like that. So he moved to um, Iowa State, which is, I can't remember where it is. Ames. In Ames, Iowa. And he took a, a, a boarded with the Presbyterian minister. And the Presbyterian minister had a daughter that he married. And he then became attached to the Presbyterian church. At the same time, Purdue University lost its dean of engineering. Well, then he was, he started out as just a professor of engineering, and then he became the dean of engineering at Iowa State. At the, then Purdue's dean died or retired or something, and the president of Purdue University came to um, Iowa State and said, we need a new dean of engineering. Can we talk to your faculty? They talked to Potter and said, would you come to Purdue and be the dean? And he said, yes, I would. So he and his wife moved here, and he came here as a Presbyterian. He, however, he ever never ever lost touch with his Jewish relatives in Boston. Hmm. And he came here and he he essentially built the Purdue University at School of Engineering. Very he was a very powerful um, uh, select, selector of, of faculty. He was very much involved in the associate, the AST Association of, of Mechanical Engineering. I forget exactly what he was the president of that nationally, nationally. and he um, was a, a powerful administrator. As a matter of fact, once when between presidents, he was an acting president of Purdue University. Really? Oh yes. And I have, I don't think, I don't know that I've done any of that stuff in here, but I have messages where he's, he's, his name was A.A. A. Potter, acting dean or something, acting president. Then Hovde came along and um, was a very uh, socially, um, so social justice was his one of his main themes. There was a time when um, the union had a barber shop, and barbers would would not cut the black people's hair. And he says, "Yes, you will cut black people's." So all the barbers quit; they would not do it. Hmm. But you can see that this man Hovde was, and of course he said, "Look, well, I want the best people. I don't care what, what their religion is." And he opened the door, and and when I was here. There were a lot of, of Jewish students. The Eastern schools all had quotas on them, and they couldn't get, they couldn't learn engineering in the East, so they came here. Mm. And almost all of my friends were Jewish. So, um, I think one of the things that Potter did was design this this uh, power plant. He was a thermodynamicist. Mm. That's, that's, 
the very definition of the power. Right. And um, I met this, I was, I used to winter in uh, Mexico at a place called San Miguel de Allende. Have you ever heard of that? No. Is it on the water? No, it's inland, north, and a little uh, east of Mexico City. It's, it's a um, colonial city. You know, the sidewalks, the streets are all cobblestone, and nice. we're just a wonderful place, a wonderful Jewish community there. We really, I, we, my wife and I would would go, we would go down there in, in December, and I would come back. She liked to stay longer than I did. <laughs> and um, I was. We always we always met the the, the Jewish community. We'd have meetings and one start. We'd always start the meeting by saying, "Well, tell you tell us who you are, where you came from." And I said, "I'm Harry Herschel from Walden, from Lafayette, Indiana." And, and this woman leaned forward and said, "My uncle was the dean of engineering at Purdue." I said, "You mean Dean Potter?" She said, "Yes." <laughs> small world. It's a small world. And I wrote it up. If you, you, can, you can read it if you like. I don't want you. And I'm, as a matter of fact, I, every year I send out a, a New Year's greeting card, New Year's newsletter with what I'm doing. And, and um, her name is Grace Lebo, and I'm, I'm still in touch with them. I, I, I send them my current, my current thing, and they, uh, they respond. Erwin, Erwin. As you can imagine, she married a um, an engineer. He, he he graduated from MIT, and he, he he practiced engineering. I don't remember much about that, but just people to people, we got to know him. And she said that all during the depression. Well, first of all, uh, Dean Potter had financed his mother coming to this country, his mother and his sister, and his sister is Grace Lee Bowe's grandmother. That's how they're connected. And they, they came here and would visit uh, Dean Potter, and he had one of those, um, what do you call it, it's fancy things where you make coffee or something. Espresso machine? No, no, no. Oh. Um, what was it? I, I think I've got that. It, and uh, all during, the depression, he would send a fifty-dollar check to his mother, and that kept him going in the depression. Fifty dollars was a good sum. Then. Right. And he, and, and he was a, a Jew in Boston and a Presbyterian <laughs> in Lafayette, Indiana. And he was a, he, he belonged to Central Presbyterian Church, and people remembered him. I, I called, I, I talked to him when I was writing all this. A fascinating man. I, I titled my paper Dean Potter, A Man for All Seasons. Just a great man. And then when he, he departed this life, um, the Boston Pope folks were notified, and Grace's brother or cousin or somebody came here for the funeral, and Rabbi Engel. And the funeral home said the, 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 the Jewish prayers uh, at, at his uh, at his casket. We have two there are two two Jewish prayers: the uh, El Moli Rocket Main and the, the Mourners Cottage. And, and then the body was transported to I think the Presbyterian Church, and then. Uh, there are several, several important people spoke of him. He he's buried here in this cemetery at the top of the hill on uh, Salisbury. Grandview Heights. Yes. Grandview Cemetery. Yes. 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 And one of the one of, the, one of my friends remember the remember the funeral. He said it was it was it was raining when they buried him, and it was like God was crying because <laughs> the passing of this great man. Two buildings at Purdue are named after him. Yes. One, one, the uh, Potter Center where the library is, and then the Potter Building on uh, Hammond in the, in, the, in the Calumet campus. Really, I didn't realize the one in Calumet. Nobody else has ever had 
two buildings named for them. And there's a picture of Potter in the Hall of Music. Have you ever seen that? No, I have not actually. Well, um, the Hall of Music was built from federal funds that said you cannot build, we will not, we will not finance new buildings, but we will finance buildings that are attached to buildings. So they built a Hall of Music attached to the executive building, which is now called Huggity Hall. Yes. And yes. you can walk, when you, to get there, you walk up the steps, through, and then you walk through a passageway into this, and then there's a big lobby. His big picture is an oil painting of him, is, is uh, there. And he was a, a, a big mason, and he, you can see his Masonic ring on his finger. Hmm. I'll have to look for it. Yeah. So do you remember your time fondly at Purdue? In some ways, you kind of never left. I'm going to talk very personally about this, and you, you, you can, you can uh, omit this kind of stuff. But um, I had a tough growing up period. My father heard the expression, spare the rod and spoil the child, and he beat me. And it just is a terrible, terrible way to raise the children. And however, he sent me to a camp in Michigan where we learned about the, a balanced life. And that was a great time to get away from my, my father. It was a six week camp, and it was great. That was one time in my life. And then when I came to Purdue, I really fit in here. It, it was a happy time. You can see I was not such a great student, although I did get a... There are lots of fives on there. Five, but, see, now we don't do that. I it's know. ABC, but you see, and six, six was the high one. Oh. See, I got one six in this whole thing. A six called in differential <laughs> equations. Hmm. I understood differential equations. You know, and the calculus is the main... Uh, what can I say? The, 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 central, the central focus of engineering, it, it speaks about movement. You, have, you studied, have you studied mathematics? A long time ago. Well, Thus, did you remember, did you study calculus, the calculus? Yes. Well, the calculus is, talks about movement. The definition of acceleration and the definition of, you know, I can't remember all the terms, but, but if you can't, if you can't grasp the calculus, you're not going to be an engineer, I can tell you that. However, it was not that, it was not the, the, uh, the dividing, the dividing um, course, the chemistry was, the dummies and the lazy they couldn't get through chemistry, they couldn't be an engineer. They'd go off to something else. What would they go off to? Um, in engineering, or um, um, the, the, we did not have a department of education, in our school of education, but they, they went into some kind of liberal arts stuff or something like that. So it was a great time and I really felt very, I, I really had a great time here, and I um, then I went into a family business, and that was a disaster. So I came back to Purdue in 1956. And what year did you retire? 86. I retired after 30 years. I worked at Purdue for 30 years, and I retired. I, 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 that was one of the things that I, I want I want to uh, say and and have you can you can quote me on this. Engineering is a great education. I, I was never a practicing engineer, but I, I un, see the basis of, of of engineering is the idea of of a system, things working together, and that that's that's in management too. Things have to work together. Right. And I, I ended up as a director of administrative computing, and all that came out of an engineering background that 
that it, in, in many respects it's, it's the direct result of Potter's emphasis on being able to do things. So when you had your undergrad engineering, did you take any liberal arts classes? Yes, I, I took uh, a course in sociology, leadership. I took um, a course in accounting principles. I took a course in government, in, in international relations. An English course? At English mo Modern Plays, yes. Huh. And then perhaps the most, one of the most important courses I took was the civil engineering. And in civil engineering, it, it was a course called um, Contracts and Specifications in Engineering. And, you know, that's a very important part of engineering because we're typically doing stuff that can only be done under contract. You, know, you dig around a wall, and if the wall collapses, you got a you got a lawsuit on your hands. So, the course was taught by the head of civil engineering, a very elegant, distinguished man. And we came in the first day. He says, "I want to tell you guys something you never you never want to forget, and that is the difference between a proposal and an offer. And the difference is a proposal is a generalized statement about something you want to do." But an offer is part of a contract. And if you make an offer and somebody says accept the offer, you've got a contract. And you want to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can remember that stuff. Yes. You remember lots. Yeah. And I rem and of course, the thing is, if you write it down, it makes it easy to recall it. That's true. Yeah. I always make lists for that very reason. Yeah, I took a course in in time and motion study and industrial organizations and, and there are two different labeled heat power oh yeah well heat heat, heat power is and th this is the second page i've got i've, I've got my beginning stuff on, on another page but heat power is um ag again the transformation of heat into power and I don't remember what this is. I mean, it was another. We had um, courses in uh, um, heating and ventilating, and well, it's just all, all the stuff that, that that mechanical engineers do. Did both of those occur in the power plant, though? No, uh, only one of them. The rest of them were all theoretical and it, in those days um, we had charts that would convert various things into BTUs and now of course they do it all on a computer. So did did all of the engineers at one point spend time in the power plant? Oh no, the, the electrical engineers I, I don't think had anything to do with the power plant. The chemical engineers all in the Chemical engineering was, at my, in my day, was the, toughest, was the toughest curriculum because you had to know all this chemistry stuff. Um, that was, but, and metal, they had, it was called metallurgical engineering. Now it's called engineering. Um, it includes all kinds of plastics. Mm -hmm. It's material sciences rather than metallurgical engineering. Engineering was always, there was always a big population of engineering students at Purdue. I know that still is. I haven't looked at yes. enrollment. Yes. Yes. And of course, a lot of them are foreign students. You know, they they need to understand this stuff. This year, we have the largest population of international students in the country. I'm not surprised. For a, private, or a public university. And you know who benefits from that? Who? Lafayette Lemo. <laughs> That's true. Back and forth. You, you all, I all almost never. Take a lot of that level without a bunch of foreign students in there. Yes. They're, they they go back to their country or they travel around. Or, yeah. Yes. Well, do you have anything else you want to add? No. I'll make a copy of um, my paper on uh, Dean Potter. Yes, I would like that. Thank you. I, actually, one of the uh, 
editorial writers uh, for engineering. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Potter. First of all, he established contact with the state of Indiana, and they would have a yearly highway interaction with the, the highway department to help them understand how to build roads that would work. That's one of the things he did. The second thing is he established a department where graduate graduating uh, engineers could interact with uh, industrial enterprises that were looking for labor. And I, that's still in operation. Yes, yeah. the career yeah. fairs, yes. Yeah, yes. As a matter of fact, when, it, when I had to leave the family business, uh, I wrote to the head of the, the um, and his son is, lives here. I, as a matter of fact, I know him. His, and I wrote and said, I'm looking for a job. I, uh, can you help me? He says, absolutely, come on over. So I came over and he, he I got a job with uh, Jim Blakesley. I was his first administrative assistant. And he was a guy that, he was an engineer and he organized the classroom so that they would be dispersed for almost all the hours of the week so that uh, they minimized the amount of space that it would go to classrooms. And out of that grew, then I'd, then I, the, the guy that helped me get moved through the ranks that was named John Hicks. He was an assistant to the president. And I, got, I was asked to be the director of administrative computing, and I, I did that for 14 of my 30 years at Purdue. I did that more than any other time. And I graduated, I, I retired at, at the age of 60, and I've been retired almost. Uh, 39 years now. Well, thank you very much. Okay. We appreciate Harry Herschel. Yeah.